I want to thank you for joining me today. You can notice we're starting a little bit differently. There's no music. I don't have the candles lit. That's just the way it's going to have to be. I will confess to you, we recorded a service just before this, and to be frank, it was just a piece of rubbish. <laughs> nothing worked right, nothing worked well, not even the technology worked well. Um, I'm telling you this because we just decided that we're going to give you something simpler and something a little more uplifting. I feel like the theme for this week is a very heavy theme, because again, it's a theme of judgment. And it's a harsh theme, and we've all felt like we've been rung through uh, as tight as we possibly can because of the election, because of this COVID-19, everything that's going on. I think you need to be lifted up a little bit more than that. Yes, we need to pay attention to the services and the pointed lessons for the year, but you are more important than the lectionary lessons and what's appointed for the church year. So I'm going to try to bless you tonight. We're just going to have a shorter service for this Sunday. And I do hope it's a blessing to you. One or two announcements to remind you, uh, Thanksgiving Eve service will only be online. You're encouraged to go ahead and watch that if you'd like. On Thanksgiving Day, you can put it out there. going to be eight great songs of Thanksgiving that you can turn on while you're making your turkey. It's going to be fun. But we will not have an in-person option on Thanksgiving. We will, again, be starting Advent in a couple of weeks from today. That's hard to believe. You're going to have some special music by Alan Turner every single Sunday. It's going to be fantastic, so we look forward to that. Also look forward to a letter that will be in the mail here shortly about Christmas. Christmas Eve service is going to be a lot different this year. So please take a look at that. You will literally have to schedule a time to come to Christmas Eve service because we're only permitted so many people in our services at a certain time. So first come first serve basis with that so please keep your eyes open for that letter that will be coming soon we're going to start with him today we're going to start with a song that's just going to lift you up we want to bless you and so we began our service today the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the communion of the holy spirit be with you all amen
Let us pray. We give you thanks, merciful God, for the lesson we're about to open up. We ask you to open up our hearts to your word this day. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to do a very short sermon. I'm going to read you the lesson today. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a harsh lesson. But I'm going to try to find the hopefulness in this. I have taken my sermon handout for today. It's gone. Yeah, I spent a lot of time working on that. I'm not saying that, oh, poor me. I'm saying that because sometimes things just don't work. And as I mentioned to you earlier, your needs, our needs, my wife's needs, are much more important than serving the traditions of the church, including the lectionary. And so I'm going to read to you the point of lesson for today. We're going to try to find the good news in it because it's a harsh lesson. Not going to lie. We are in the end of times in terms of the lessons. These are lessons that are used, again, for the reflection of Jesus and his, his end time lessons and so forth. And this one is about judgment. But I do think there's some good news here. So here's Jesus' words. He's speaking to his disciples. He has just come out of the temple criticizing the scribes and the Pharisees. And this lesson is meant for us. It's about the scribes and the Pharisees because they're lazy butts or servants of God. Okay? And Jesus said, I don't want my disciples to be lazy butt servants of God either. So please take a, lesson, a listen to this lesson. And so this is kind of our warning. But let's find the hopefulness here. It will be as when a man going on a long journey called his servants together and trusted them to his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. Each according to his own ability. Then he went away. And the one who received five talents went at once and traded with them and made five talents more. Also, he went, the man who had two talents, uh, went and made two talents more. But he would receive the one talent, went and dug it in a hole in the ground, and hid it there until his, uh, his master's money there, until the master returned. So after a long time, the master and those servants came and settled accounts with them. He would receive the five talents, came forward, bringing forth five more. and said, Master, you delivered me five. Here I give you five more. His master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over very little. I will send you over much, enter into the joy of your master. So also, the one who had two came forward and said, Master, you delivered to me two talents, I made two more. His master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over little, I will send you over much, enter into the joy of your master. Okay, this is where I'd like to end the lesson right now, but this next part is really directed at us, so it's kind of a warning to us. Here's what happened to the guy who only had one talent. Who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you'd be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not winnow. So I was afraid I wouldn't hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master said, You are a wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sowed, and gather where I have not winnowed. You ought to have invested my money with the bankers. So at the coming, I would receive what was my own, plus interest. Take the talent away from him, give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has has more will be given and he will have abundance but from him who has not even what he has will be taken away and cast that word will serve into the outer darkness their men will be weep and gnash teeth okay gospel of our lord you know gospel means good news hard to hear the good news here but we're going to take a moment and just reflect on that let's pray heavenly father we thank you for the gospel lesson for this day and there is good news here and i pray that you help us to see it because we're all in a really depressed mood right now. It's just been such a frustrating months, months and months of this COVID-19, the political infighting, the battles that's going on in our country, and people just hating one another, Christians hating each other. Unfortunately, we're contributing a part of the problems of this world. And so we ask that you would help us be more faithful servants, that we might, again, nurture what it is you've given us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to appeal to you. You've been given a talent. Now that's not, could be a gift, could be money, whatever it is. God has given it to you. Everything that we have is God's. The breath I have in my lungs right now belongs to God. This body is God's temple. It belongs to God. The money I have in my wallet, you see how we talk about this, it's really God's. It's God's wallet. It's God's money. The relationships I have are God's relationships. I nurture them on behalf of God. We have not been very faithful in this season of unrest because we Christians have contributed to the chaos. We've criticized people. 
We've called them idiots and dolts and stupid and dumb. We've called them uh, sheeples and all that type of stuff. I'm telling you what, if that type of stuff is on your Facebook page and you're calling people sheeples and stupid and idiots, you need to change your way and come to repentance. Because that is not a faithful way of using the gifts and the people that God has given us. This is what Jesus is warning us about. We need to be better caretakers of what God has given us. So I want you to think right now, of those people that you dismiss because they disagree with you, and I want you to understand they're God's gift to you. We need to tend to them and care for them and nurture them. In God's eyes, they are rock stars. In God's eyes, He sees them as a tent. They may not always act like a tent, neither do you. But we need to start nurturing what God has given us. So we need to see in people the image of God. Nurture the relationships that God has given us so that we can return a better world to God. Well, we're not going to do it with the infighting that's going on right now. We Christians need to represent God's love to this world. And it starts by loving each other. So we had a season of fighting. We've all participated in it. It's time for us to put take our swords and beat them into plowshares to nurture the relationships that we have. Do something constructive with the time that we have. And the relationships with which we struggle, the people with whom we have dismissed, to nurture those relationships. To care for the people that God has given us. To take the time that God has given us and use it to be a blessing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the many gifts and many blessings that you've given to us this day. The people that you've placed in our lives. We thank you for the finances that you've given some of us. Not all of us have the resources to, to make it through every day. So God, if we've got enough, help us to share. If we've got time, help us to care. Help us to nurture our relationships, the money, all of these wonderful gifts that you've given us, our family. These are precious gifts. So let us grow them stronger. So when we return these to you, people are nurtured in their relationship with you because of us being in their lives. We have grown the blessing of God because we've invested what you've given us to share with other people. We just give you thanks. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn. Yes, I did say our closing hymn for today. I told you we're just doing a simple service. I want you to be blessed. You've been dumped on enough. It's time for us to lift each other up. And so I want to leave you with a song to remind you how much God absolutely adores you. This was written by a guy, I actually knew him, John Ivelsacker. He just died a few years ago, and uh, he actually taught a few classes at the seminary I went to in, in, in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I'd just like to share this song and sing it with you today. Born and Cry, I want you to hear it as God's words to you, because that's how it's written. It's not me singing to you, it's God singing to you about his great love that he has for you.
I'm, our, I'm asking you to just believe this. God loves you. You're made in God's image. And so is that person that you have just dismissed this week. They are beautiful in God's sight. I need you to promise me something. I would like you to go and start treating people the way you would like to be treated. And I would like you to start seeing people the way God sees them. Treating them like rock stars. Like beautiful creations of God. Whether you agree with them or not. Just imagine how we could change the world. May God's blessing be upon you this day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.